proceedings of this portfolio committee through the platforms which are provided by the South African Parliament as part of ensuring that our democracy indeed become participatory, our democracy adheres to principles of adherence, adherence to the principles of openness and transparency, and that the people can learn on how we conduct the affairs of parliament. At the same time, the people through them observing the proceedings of our committee and other committees, they can at whatever stage raise matters with the portfolio committee or with parliament by among others petitioning parliament. Today, honorable members, we are going to be getting a briefing from the department on a member of SADC. The Kingdom of Lesotho, as we know, went through the elections recently. Yesterday, they were going through their parliamentary processes and the inauguration of the president. We are told it will be on Friday. Lesotho, as a member of SADC, is an important partner and participant. It is not only in that regard, it's also because it's our neighbor. Lesotho is like a belly button of a human being in as far as South Africa is concerned. So whatever happens in Lesotho happens to affect South Africa. Our economy is intertwined with the economy of Lesotho. The cultures of both South Africans and Lesotho are integrated and intertwined. People relate, they have got, they have got relatives in Lesotho, and Lesotho has got uh, relatives uh, in South Africa. Culturally, the situation is also the same. That is why it was important for South Africa, also as a member of SADC and as one of the member states of the AU, participated in making sure that the elections in Lesotho are successful. Because the peace of Lesotho is our peace. The stability in Lesotho is our stability. The prosperity of Lesotho is also our stability. So today we are going to be having set to come and brief us about the proceedings in the Soto. It doesn't look like we've got the Babala on the line. Uh, Andy, sir, may you be aware of any apology that we may have received that came to me? is uh, from Honorable Muela. Honorable uh, Muela has got a bereavement, the lost aunt uh, in the family, so he might not be part of the proceedings of this portfolio committee today. And as a portfolio co committee, we send condol to the member of this portfolio committee, the broader affair of the Muelas, and may the soul of aunt run eternal peace we wish and hope that and pray that God will give them strength to go through this bereavement. Hello? Uh, good morning, Chairperson and honorable members. Uh, Chair, I, I, I have uh, two apologies, Chair. Oh, in fact, it's three. Uh, one from uh, Deputy Minister Masha Khodlamini and the other one from Deputy Minister Portis. They are both uh, out of the country on working visits. And also the DG is engaged in uh, Ethiopian talks. So you will not be joining the meeting today. However, the minister is present and she is leading the delegation. Uh, and also the fourth one was from Orobomuela, which we are just right now, Chair. Thank you so much. Honorable Comrade Mena Lady Pando, uh, you are welcome to the Portfolio Committee. We are also aware of the sterling and important critical work you have been doing 
on behalf of the people of South Africa, through your portfolio as a Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. That work relates to what we have been doing together with the presidency as far as the United Nations work is concerned, and also the other work that you have been doing internationally, including from time to time, in through the Department of South Africa's position, in as far as some of the international developments are concerned. We are now going to give over to you to take us through the briefing after which members will be given an opportunity to interact with the briefing on the Kingdom of Lesotho. Over to you, Ma. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Allow me to uh, greet all the honorable members of the Portfolio Committee, as well as the uh, support staff. I'm just going to make uh, brief remarks, and may I thank you, Chair, for your kind comments on our work. I'm extremely happy that I'm back home in South Africa for some uh, uh, days. Uh, it's uh, always lovely uh, to be home. Just make a few remarks, and then I will hand over to uh, uh, Ms. Shongwe, who will present on behalf of the department. I wanted to uh, just remind us, Chairperson, of the work that had been done by President Ramaphosa as the SADC uh, facilitator for uh, Lesotho. Uh, the President had devoted uh, many hours uh, to this work, having created a support uh, committee of facilitators led by uh, the Honorable uh, former uh, Deputy Chief Justice of South Africa, uh, Justice Moseneke, um, and supported uh, uh, by uh, the Deputy Minister Mashiko Dlamini, uh, former Deputy Minister Malikani, former Deputy Minister uh, Serti, and officials uh, and the High Commissioner in Lesotho, as well as officials from the Department of International Relations and uh, Cooperation. So Chairperson, uh, we are pleased that uh, this work has led to the election on which uh, the Portfolio Committee will receive a report uh, uh, today, but has also allowed SADC to agree that the facilitation is now over and uh, oversight of implementation of the agreed reforms is now handed over to the SADC uh, uh, panel of the wise, panel of elders rather, supported by the regional mediation uh, uh, mechanism. So they will provide uh, regular reports to the SADC summit as to progress with respect to all the reforms uh, that were agreed as part of the uh, facilitation process outcomes. So Chairperson, uh, to my remarks, we're very happy and uh, thankful that the committee has invited us to provide an update on the recent elections in the Kingdom of Lesotho that were held on the 7th of October this year. We did make a presentation to the committee uh, just toward the end of September on the 28th, which presentation provided an update on the state of preparedness of the Kingdom of Lesotho to hold uh, elections. Um, uh, the portfolio committee would remember that we had some uh, nail-biting moments uh, toward the end of uh, September, because not all the legislation that is required for the elections had been passed at the stage of reporting, but we are pleased that uh, that hurdle uh, was overcome and uh, that the National Assembly elections were successfully held on the 7th of October and were observed by local as well as international observers all of whom have deemed the elections as having been conducted 
in a peaceful and free environment. There was a SADC election observer mission, which was deployed and supported by the new chair of the organ, uh, Namibia, and uh, there were observers from 11 SADC countries that added to the observer missions. Uh, Chairperson, having made those preliminary remarks, allow me, with your permission, to invite Ms. Ling Linda Shongwe, the Chief Director responsible for SADC and Southern Africa, to present on the outcome of the elections in the Kingdom of Lesotho. I thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, um, Honorable Minister, uh, to the Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members of the Committee, and all uh, senior officials and members in attendance, I greet you this morning. Uh, thank you for allowing me to make this presentation. We project uh, the map of the Kingdom of Lesotho which shows the 10 voting districts, which, will, which we will refer to in the presentation. As a background, the Kingdom of Lesotho held National Assembly elections on 7 October 2022. The elections were regulated by, the, by Section 80, 83 of the 1993 Constitution of Lesotho with amendments through 2018. In addition to the Constitution, the elections were governed by the National Assembly Electoral Act of 2011 and the Electoral Code of Conduct. For the, 22, for the 2022 elections, there were 1,387,861 registered voters, which is an increase of 129,652 129, newly registered voters since the 2017 elections. As indicated in the map, the Kingdom of Lesotho has 10 voting districts, which are subdivided into 80 electoral constituencies. Out of the 60, 65 political parties that are registered for the elections, only 52 parties eventually contested the elections, 11 of which were led by women. The National Assembly in the Kingdom of Lesotho is made out of 120 members and is elected for a five-year term of office. Out of the 120 members, 80 of those members are elected through plurality votes in a single member constituency system, while the remaining 40 members are allocated through proportional representation, also referred to as compensatory seats. The National Assembly elections took place against the background of the failure by the outgoing parliament to pass the Omnibus Constitutional Amendment Bill and other legislative uh, legislations, including the Electoral Amendment Act. It would be recalled that after the government of Lesotho had recalled parliament to pass the Omnibus Bill and other legislations, this process was challenged uh, uh, in the High Court of Lesotho, and as a result, uh, the work that the, the National Assembly did during the time of the recall was, um, was, was cancelled. So the omnibus bill was expected to give the incoming government a clear mandate in advancing the national reforms, whilst the Electoral Amendment Bill would have ushered key reforms aimed at bringing stability to the functioning of parliament and government. Another key development uh, in the run-up to the elections was the formation of a new political party in March 2022, uh, the Revolution for Prosperity Party, led by uh, a prominent businessman, Mr. Samuel Nzogwane Matekan. In their election campaigns, most political parties alluded to the need to prioritize their reforms process should they be elected. The pre-election environment was characterized by peaceful campaigning by political parties, which culminated in star rallies, an equivalent of the Anoba rallies here at home, on the 2nd and 3rd of October, respect respectively. With regard to the elections and the outcomes, there were 3,151 voting stations across the country. And the advanced voting took place on the 30th of September 2022, 
and 3,000 voters had registered to vote on the day. On the 7th of October 2022, elections kicked off in all districts at 7 a.m. and closed at 5 p.m. In voting stations where there were delays in opening times, this was compensated for by adjusting the closing times. All 79, only, uh, pardon me, only 20, 79 out of 80 constituencies were contested due to the death of a candidate in one of the constituencies in Maseru. So it is expected that a by-election will be held as soon as it is gazetted by the new parliament. Voting day proceeded uh, smoothly with active participation of party agents, most of whom were women and youth. Also the counting and tallying of ballots were done and confirmed by party agents at the polling stations before being sent to the National Results Center, which captured the release of the results live in the presence of party agents and observers. On the 10th of October 2022, the Lesotho Independent Electoral Commission released the final res election results. And out of the 79 constituencies uh, contested, the Revolution for Prosperity Party won 46 constituencies, whilst the Democratic Congress trailed behind with 18 constituencies. The Alliance for Democrats uh, won uh, two constituencies, and the Movement for Economic Change the National Independent Party and the Socialist Revolutionary Party won one constituency each. These constituencies, as indicated, translate into parliamentary seats. For the four proportional representation or, compensa or compensatory seats, the allocations were as, followed, were as follows. For the Revolution for Prosperity Party, they remain with the, 46, with the, with the 40, 56 uh, votes and no compensatory seats. So they remain with 56 uh, 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 parliamentary seats. For the Democratic Congress, they were given additional eight seats and they remain with 26 parliamentary seats. The All Basutu Convention, uh, they were compensated with eight seats, which gave them overall eight uh, parliamentary seats. The Basutu Action Party were given eight, uh, six seats the Alliance for Democrats, uh, they had two constituency seats and three compensatory seats, which gave them five parliamentary seats. The Movement for Economic Movement, uh, uh, the Movement for Economic Change, one constituency and three additional seats, which gave them four parliamentary seats. The LCD, the Lesotho Congress for Democracy, were given three compensatory seats. The Basotho National Party two compensatory seats and the socialist revolutionaries, they were given an additional seat which left, left, left them with two uh, parliamentary seats. The remaining six parties obtained one parliamentary seat each. Despite the winning, despite winning the seven, uh, about 71% of the constituencies, the Revolution for Prosperity Party could not get majority seats in parliament. In this regard, uh, they formed a coalition with the Alliance for Democrats, led by Mr. Munyane Mulileki, with five collective parliamentary seats, and the Movement for Economic Change, led by Mr. Sidibe Muchoburwane, with four collective parliamentary seats. Of, of significance, then, is that the ruling coalition has a majority of 65 seats in the parliament of Lesotho, whilst the main opposition has 28 seats. Uh, pardon me, has 26 seats. The RFP has promised to do away with corruption and nepotism. In their manifesto, they also uh, have a vision that includes the finalization of the reform process, improved water and energy for all Basutu. They promised to improve health services, uh, provide improved education, quality education, and focus on increased uh, industrialization of the economy. Importantly, uh, the coalition partners have also agreed to prioritize the national reforms process and reduce the number of ministers in cabinet. A brief analysis of uh, the process, uh, as uh, the minister also indicated, uh, in preparation for the elections, the Lesotho Independent Electoral Commission had invited election observers from the SADAC, the African Union, the Commonwealth, the SADAC Electoral Commission, Commission's Forum, 
the European Union and embassies and missions accredited to Lesotho, and notably the United Kingdom. Uh, the observer mission uh, of the SADAC, which was led by the chair of the organ, um, as indicated, um, led the, the, the mission and 11 SADAC countries sent election observers to Lesotho that were deployed in, to all 10 voting districts. During the pre-election engagements, uh, which were done by the SADAC uh, SEOM uh, with various political parties, most confirmed their commitment to prioritizing the national reforms should they win the elections. Whilst uh, political parties maintained their high regard of the IEC, they complained about the management of the voters' role, which could not be finalized in good time. The RFP also went to court to force the IEC to issue a, dig a digital voter's role. Most parties uh, attributed the voter's role challenge to the non-release of adequate funding by the government. And it is also notable that the voter turnout was 37%, a significant drop compared to the 46% in the 2017 elections. Uh, analysts um, attribute the lower voter turnout to voter apathy and limited voter education by the IEC. Uh, during the interactions, uh, there were also NGOs that assisted with voter education throughout the country. In their preliminary statements following the, the elections, the international observers were unanimous in declaring the elections as peaceful, well-organized and professionally managed. However, they also noted the concerns raised uh, by uh, stakeholders regarding the, the accuracy of the voters' role and another area that was generally identified as problematic was the lack of sufficient and timely funding availed by the IEC to the IEC by the government. It is notable that there were no legal challenges on the outcomes of the National Assembly elections in Lesotho. We've also provided a, a summary of the proposed constitutional reforms relevant to the Lesotho electoral system. Uh, in brief, the Draft Electoral Amendment Act, amongst others, makes provisions for floor crossing in the National Assembly only after a period of three years of, of the installation of Parliament. Persons uh, who become members of Parliament through proportional representation or, compens co or compensatory seats will only be permitted, will not be permitted to cross the floor. Pardon me. Uh, the draft electoral amendment that also introduces the age of majority in Lesotho and sets it at 18 years instead of 21 years. It also makes provision for the restriction of political parties by indigenous citizens of Lesotho who have attained the age of majority. The draft act makes provision for diaspora voting. Currently, voting outside the kingdom is limited to Basotho who are serving at diplomatic missions abroad. The, act also the Draft Amendment Act also limits the powers of the Prime Minister to prorogue Parliament. In, the, in that, the Prime Minister can only recommend prorogation of Parliament for 14 days, and even then the Prime Minister would require the approval of the Council of State. It provides for a Ketega government to be temporarily in charge of the government after the dissolution of Parliament until a new prime minister is appointed. It limits the tenure of office of the prime minister to only two terms. The Draft Amendment Act also provides for the formation of the coalition government in a situation where there is no outright winner of a general election and sets the ceiling of the size of the cabinet. So these are the reforms that would have been effected should the, 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 the reforms have been passed by the 10th Lesotho Parliament. In conclusion, uh, we conclude that the pre-election uh, election and post-election phases were peaceful and provided a conducive environment for the conduct of the elections. Whilst the main National Assembly elections were deemed peaceful, credible and free, the observers noted the shortcomings of the IC with regard to the voters' role and the budget limitations that somewhat impacted the work of the IEC. These issues will be expanded upon in the final reports of the observers, which will be submitted to the government of Lesotho in due course. The reports will also contain recommendations for action 
by the Lesotho government and the IEC. As the minister indicated, the advancement of the national reforms which are predicated upon the passing of the Omnibus uh, Constitutional Amendment Bill and other re related legislations remains a priority for South Africa and the SADAC. The commitment of the incoming government to prioritize the national reforms is commended and will receive the necessary support from SADAC as articulated by the 42nd Summit, SADAC Summit, which has appointed an oversight committee to oversee the implementation of reforms of the elections in the Kingdom of Lesotho. Uh, as um, indicated at, at the beginning, uh, yesterday the, the, the National Assembly members of Parliament were sworn in and the Prime Minister-elect uh, of the Kingdom of Lesotho, the Right Honourable Samuel Nsobane Matekani, will be inaugurated on the 28th of October 2022. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much, Ms. Bengu. Uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, Mena Lady, can you hear me? Oh, now I can hear you, Chair. You disappeared okay, for a moment. That's the presentation on the Kingdom of. Yes, ma'am. Negrafella, is there anything you would want to amplify? No, no, I think the presentation covers all the issues. Thank you, Chairperson. There's the presentation, honorable members, on the Kingdom of Lesotho and the role South Africa has played working in the context of SADC. Uh, we have seen how the parties there post the elections uh, are now committing to work together. And we have also seen the recommendation in as far as uh, the observer missions are concerned. But the elections went well. It bodes well, not only for the Sotho, but for our region as SADC, in as far as matters of stability are concerned. There's the presentation members. Can we have members who may want to either comment or raise questions? I think the presentation is quite straightforward. It was just an update. Any member wants to say something? Okay, I don't see any member. Okay, Honorable Bergman and Nkosi. Chair, sure, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to first start off by, uh, again, from the DA side, uh, wishing Honorable Moela um, and his family our condolences. And then I would also like to have this point of departure to wish the minister um, everything of success for her and Durko. Often Tigre has been the forgotten, uh, um, should we say, war or genocide, um, with 300 to 500,000 lives lost and not anyone really talking about it. I've often been astounded that people talk about Ukraine and Russia, and yet when it comes to the UN, uh, when it comes to Tigre, we've often found wanting and i blame that on africa i blame that on the un and we've put in resolutions to the liberal international world we've put it into africa liberal network now but i am glad that africa uh, south africa especially is leading the way in the peace talks and i just hope and i wish the minister well in finding resolve and that uh, we we curb the loss of life that's taking place there in terms of the Lesotho elections, I must also just say that uh, another success in that I've often found that it's not the politicians that are going to find peace in a lot of conflicted areas. And again, I urge the minister when she looks for peace planning in, in many, uh, you know, in many of the peace accords that she look at, the most successful peace accords in the world have actually been drawn up by businessmen and not politicians. And again, it's no wonder that it's now a businessman that is now the Prime Minister of Lesotho. And we wish him well. 
We wish Lesotho well, and we look forward to prosperity in Lesotho. Thank you very much, Shea. Thanks, Honorable Nkosi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, uh, and greetings to the Minister and her team. Uh, wishing Honorable Kuala and her family condolences in this difficult time. Chair, uh, this being an update, I think uh, the committee should note the results and the progress made, particularly if you take into consideration the efforts that went into ensuring that there is stability in the Sultan, and no less the contributions of SADAC and the efforts of the Senate team in ensuring that we have constitutional reforms in the We wish the new Lesotho government well and hope that they will contribute towards the stability in that country by introducing the much needed constitutional reforms. Thanks, Chair Person. Thank you very much, Honorable Nkosi. I think the proposal from your side is very clear. And I think the committee agrees with your proposal. I don't know, Minister, if you've got uh, closing remarks, particularly as it relates to some of the issues that uh, Honorable Bergman has raised, uh, other than the matter what, which was on the table today of, of the Kingdom of Lesotho, mm. just before we close. No, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, and thanks to uh, Mr. Bergman on the comments on the peace talks. Um, and with respect to, to Lesotho, uh, I'm not aware of the accords uh, that uh, Mr. Bergman referred to, uh, but it's uh, very interesting information. And I think uh, the Honorable Nkosi is right uh, that an important process has been underway and uh, South African uh, facilitation has played a very important role. I think South Africa doesn't sufficiently appreciate the degree to which its process of political negotiation and transition is admired worldwide, and uh, South Africans can actually play an extremely important role in helping to resolve conflicts and to support countries in post-conflict uh, transition uh, processes. So I'm hopeful that uh, as time proceeds, South Africa as a peaceful country uh, uh, in the uh, uh, organization of all nations will be a leader in supporting countries to appreciate that war is extremely damaging and that building consensus and focusing on a nation a building uh, is a very uh, necessary enterprise and will help us to create a, a better world. I think this is a role South Africa could play. Uh, members of uh, South Africa's parliament could serve very well in articulating the core principles of the Constitution of South Africa, but also uh, speaking more about our parliament and how it is composed, how it functions in terms of committees, the rules that are open, uh, the levels of freedom of expression. All of these are uh, examples and models that should become the banner of South Africa as we engage with the rest of the world. And from observation, I think the word world is sorely in need of an example such as one uh, that is presented uh, uh, by our country. I'm not saying we're the ideal, we have many problems, but uh, I think there's a, a lot that we can share with the rest of the world. Thank you very much, Chairperson. <laughs> Hello, Hamena lady, our 
Honorable Minister, thank you very much for the briefing. And thanks for always at all material times when the committee says we need to get accountability from the department, we get it. If you are not there in person, you do send apologies and you will delegate either your deputies or the head of department to make sure that the portfolio committee is finished with what it requested. So that must be, that, that should be applauded. Secondly, so also applaud you for the manner in which uh, matters of uh, international relations, uh, particularly the tensions that are going on in the world and how they are being handled at the United Nations level, how consistently there you as uh, the leader and our representatives in the United Nations continue to propagate South Africa's consistent position in as far as some of the conflicts in the world are concerned. Let's do, I think, uh, one thing that the scholars uh, going forward uh, may want to research further and reflect upon is the party which was formed in March and in the elections emerges as a majority party. For me, that is very interesting as part of democracy. I'm sure those who are scholars in matters of election, but I also think it's political past. We want question on the role of capital accumulation in the, the dynamics of uh, democratic states on what has uh, developed in the suit. This is just a lesson which I think going forward, we may learn one or two things. Honorable members, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for attending the meeting. I thank the minister and those who accompany the minister to the meeting, our staff that has prepared for all the logistics for the success of the meeting, the media which may have been part of this briefing, and especially South Africans who were on the YouTube channel observing and learning from the report that we have received on the Kingdom of Lesotho. Today we are going to be having the minister presenting the the midterm budget. I think it's around two o'clock. We will meet you there, honorable members, those who will be available. Enjoy your afternoon and this is how we come to the end of the meeting. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Chair. Sharp, sharp. Thank you, Chair.